Okay, I'm here at Kinton Ramen at UBC. It's originated from, I think, Toronto. I don't even know if it's actually in Japan or not. But the original one that I came across is Nancy's literally going to Google it right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> but the first time I came across Kinton Ramen is when I was in Toronto, but I never ended up trying it out. So I was so happy to know that it was opening up in Vancouver. And the very first place is back in my university, UBC, University of British Columbia. Um, so I've realized that they have totally upped their food game. Their food options are just way better than what I, what it was when I was a student here. And it's funny how I come back for the food now, even though I'm not a student. So at the end of the day, we've ordered quite a few items to try. Half of it is media tasting, the half is we uh, ordered a few more items that we're gonna compensate on our own just so that we have a good breadth for you to understand the menu and see you know, what you might wanna try as well if you're a student here or if you're just visiting. So let's go try some food. Okay, they have this QR code that you would scan and then you tap it on and then you have the menu here. Okay, so they actually have a chicken one for chicken broth, sort of like marutama. But then they also have karage ramen, which is just fully loaded with giant pieces of chicken karage. And then check out this, what is it? Oh, jalapeno chicken spicy. <laughs> and then they have vegetarian options. Show you, miso, spicy, and then a ton of additional toppings that you can choose from. Okay, so here are some of the appies we ordered. This is the taco wasabi. It's gonna have a bit of a kick to it. Yes, there is wasabi and octopus. And I actually don't really know what those are, but <laughs> I'll figure that out in a bit and put it in the description right here. But pretty much you grab the seaweed and then you take a scoop of this and you put on that and it's sort of like a hand roll. We also have a deep fried pork gyoza. You can also get it as a vegetarian option. Looks like it's got some creamy sauce right there. And then you have the tonton, which is the pork uh, rice bowl, and it's topped off with some scallions. So maybe if you're still hungry after a ramen bowl, you can just grab a little bit of this. <laughs> I think it's like celery and seaweed. Three types of noodles right here. You got the thick noodle, which is the traditional, you know, yellow ramen. And then that is the shirataki, which is the yam-based noodle for vegetarian option. And then that's the thin-based, uh, thin noodle that reminds me of marutama, uh, the chicken broth. I'm gonna try out the chicken or the chicken karage um, because the chicken karage is deep fried and you don't want it to be too soggy, so you gotta eat that one fresh, right? Like the deep fried food. And it's also, the chicken is obviously like more lighter as a broth than the spicy and the pork. So here we go. Mm. There's actually quite a bit of noodle. Don't belittle the size of that bowl. I think, I think the noodles have soaked up the soup already a bit, so they're not like, they're almost like uh, kind of like glued together at this point. The soup itself is actually not too salty, so if you are looking for a more healthy option, the chicken one is a good one for you. I have to argue that it's a little more goopy than the marutama one, but it's not bad for a chicken. I'll definitely recommend getting the Luigi or mushrooms as an add-on for this one. For the extra 
extra health benefits, you know what I'm saying? The original ramens do come with a seasoned egg. As you can see, I kind of butchered, oh, right there, butchered cutting it. It is a little on the cooked side, but it should be completely or entirely like kind of creamy or milky, which it is like a bit of it. Oh, that's way too salty for an egg. For the outside, that's nice. It's a little marble egg right there. Okay, obviously we have to try the karage, right? It's like pretty massive, not gonna lie. Look at that. And it comes with three pieces of chicken karage in the bowl. gingery. Not necessarily crispy because it's already sitting on the ramen bowl for a bit now. But it's super chunky, gingery, gingery, definitely marinated beforehand. Really delicious. And they use, I think, free range chicken here as well. Double check on that one. Mmm, that's my favorite part of the bowl right here. testing the second bowl which is the pork spicy mm, I think just pork spicy oh pork spicy garlic pork spicy garlic there's no miso here by the way <laughs> it looks like miso because it almost has a tonkatsu creamy broth I believe um, I ordered the regular thick ramen noodles for this one because it usually hugs the broth and since pork is a, like, a thicker and more dense concentrated broth um, high impact you gotta go for the thick noodles Mmm! Oh my goodness. It's got a bright spiciness to it. And a smokiness. Definitely coming from the pork. The pork, I heard, is local pork. Local Canadian pork. Oh. I believe it's sous vide. Sous vide and then, like, torched. Or seared. Because it definitely has those, those little burn marks. Mmm. Mmm! Definitely got that smoky flavor on that pork. A little on the dry side for the meat, but at least there's a little bit of fat to compensate for that. And it's not too heavy, surprisingly, for a pork ramen. Mmm. And the meat itself is like not too thin that you get nothing. Um, and then it comes to two slabs. Are we ready for the add-ons for this one that I ordered? Okay, so this is spicy, but then I thought these were just jalapenos, but no, guess what? There's literally a paste at the bottom, and that I am a, I am slightly afraid of. Rithu, shout out to when you're editing this, you might want to eat this one. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the add-ons, because I'm inspired, inspired by Kintaro in downtown. They have a spicy cheese um, miso, so I decided to order the Swiss cheese on the side, and we're going to add it to or spicy pork garlic <laughs> so I'll probably like let it melt a bit by pressing it in and then I'm gonna be a little daredevil and add a bit of the jalapeno if my throat burns and dies this is why and let's let it sit and melt a bit Okay, the cheese doesn't melt entirely because I kind of waited a bit, taking photos and all, lol. Uh, so you might want to add the Swiss cheese right away into the soup so that it melts and helps on to the noodles. Who you want to try it anyways? Mmm. Mmm. It's almost got like a buttery tinge to that Swiss cheese. And my mentality is that the Swiss cheese will like balance out the spiciness of the soup. Kind of like, you know, Korean dakalbi adding the Swiss cheese with a super spicy chicken, like that kind of concept. Ooh, and that jalapeno is like also very nice and bright. <sighs> it's like grounded fresh jalapenos in that. Not too intense as I thought, but definitely a really great add on. I would recommend getting that add on right here. Nance is getting some herself right now. Yeah, girl. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's almost like Mexican food where you have like the chilies on the side 
and then you add it in, it's that kind of refreshing cake. Yeah, it's like not pasty or, or it's really fresh. And I think I need a, a sip of this. This is Sapporo with uh, their homemade lemonade in one. Panache. This is what's called the P N A A P A N A C A G. <laughs> a little refresher, and literally because this is a refresher, uh, the perfect pairing for any spicy ramen because it's light and cooling. Um, light in the sense of not like high impact heavy beer where you feel like groggy afterwards. <sighs> like a light refreshing lemonade with a bit of alcohol. Yeah. So we, yeah, we just discussed and we think the yam noodles are like, we thought it would be like jack because that's what he said. Actually, Korean noodles are made out of yam noodles. Oh, I think someone's trying to be in my vlog here. Lols! Mmm! <laughs> okay, this is very much like Konya, like K-O-N-J-A-C noodles. It's like the little ones you buy in a tiny package for a hot pot. But they're rolled up in a little bundle. They're definitely like a more seaweed-like than flowery. I could see how someone could like it or not like it. Um, but for those who are a little more adventurous and have no other option but to eat it, this would be um, a fun one and definitely a big portion. Might take a little bit of get getting used to, um, but it's a really good alternative. Like you won't feel heavy afterwards because there is no flour involved here. Yeah, that broth is nice. Like it, it's not empty promises right there. Also, again, on the thinner side, but still has that flavor that you need. It's not like like a unique, like mind blowing miso, but it's like comfort level miso. Yeah. Last but not least, we actually ordered there. Black sesame cheesecake and their matcha cheesecake. Oh, I should quite like this matcha flavor. It comes out right away versus the match the black sesame when you taste it at the end. So the matcha cheesecake is definitely lighter in flavor, whereas black sesame it's like closer. You know what I'm saying? Matcha for me. What about you? Black sesame for you. Yeah, okay. Peace out. That was good. That was a good day. <laughs> hey you, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, feel free to hit subscribe, like, or even place a comment below. And if you want to stay tuned every Friday, make sure you hit that notification bell. See you next time.